So what's going to happen is that I'm going to set the scene. I'm going to explain, first of all, you know, something that a, a lot of you will, al will already know, uh, how Ireland got into, into this mess and the depth of the crisis that we're, we're facing. And it basically, it's all to do uh, with the way that money goes into circulation. And this, is, this has been one of Faster's in, interests for a long time. Because what we have is a debt-based currency. Uh, our money gets into circulation because somebody somewhere has borrowed it. So if you're, com if you're completely out of debt, uh, you don't owe anybody anything, you've got, let's say, 10,000 10, euros in the bank, you only have that 10,000 euros because somebody somewhere has borrowed it and is paying in, in, interest on it. So what this means is that in a growing economy, you need more money in, in circulation uh, each uh, year. And of course, in a growing economy, people are optimistic. They can see their income rising year after year. So they're perfectly prepared to borrow uh, on the strength that, yes, they will be able to repay the loan and the, and the interest on the loan too. So this works out very well on the way up. And the, the Irish property boom that has just crashed can be traced back to the decision uh, to, uh, to join the euro. And it became known, of course, I mean, there was a lot of discussion at the time, that Irish interest rates, which had typically been about 2% above German rates, were, go were going to fall. And that meant that people felt they didn't need to allow the same safety margin that they'd been giving, giving themselves previously when they, were, when they were buying property. They didn't need to allow for the prospect of interest rates rising by 2 or, or 3 percent. Instead, they knew that they, they were going to fall. And that started property prices rising. And then people seeing that they were rising uh, began to think, I'd better get onto the property ladder. I'm going to be, I'm go going to be left behind. And so uh, they went into the property market, they borrowed, that put more money into circulation in the country. That created a general atmosphere of prosperity. Restaurants did well. Shopping shops did well. Uh, people fit uh, in, in, the, in the building trade did well. And people began to borrow based on that. So you got a, a borrowing leading to more, more borrowing and more money going into circulation. And that came through and bid up house, house prices even further. And that made people even more desperate to get into the market. And what the banks did was they aided and abetted this. So there was a general reduction in, borrow, in borrowing standards uh, over, over the period. Uh, in the mid-90s, it was typical that you could borrow two and a half times the main uh, income of, a, let's say, it's a couple buying, and once the, the subsidiary income. Come, to, come 2007, uh, it was quite common for professional couples, uh, people whose incomes could be expected to increase quite considerably, to be able to borrow seven times their joint income. Five times was not, was not uncommon at all. And you were aware, uh, too, that uh, uh, the length of uh, mortgages increased uh, as well, uh, from, uh, up from the typical 20, 20, 25 years, uh, and also 100%, or even in some cases, 110% mortgages began, began to be given. So debt was piled upon debt uh, every, every, t every time um, the, uh, more money went into circulation 
that pushed house pr prices up ev even f further. It meant that people were happy to borrow against uh, the in increased equity in their, their premises, and that put more money into circulation. And so we had a most enjoyable boom, and the government benefited from that enormously uh, because roughly a third of everything that was borrowed for property found its way into gov government co co coffers. And so we all benefited from a period in which uh, there was, a, no, the, the public exchequer uh, was running surpluses. It was possible to reduce income ta tax rates. Uh, we had a much higher level of services than, in fact, we were paying for because we were borrowing. It wasn't the state that was borrowing. We were borrowing collectively, uh, and the state was taking part of it. So when you hear people on the radio saying, uh, oh, the national debt in Ireland is very low, yes, it is. But it, the government was borrowing by proxy. We were taking out the loans and paying a large, a large part to the government. So the upshot of this is that Ireland has become the most indebted country in the EU. It is uh, it, not in terms of the public debt, but in terms of the debt owed by Irish uh, residents, and that includes Irish resident companies. Now, and this is important for what Chris is going, is going to say uh, later. The uh, a debt that we owe as private individuals or as companies is a much more onerous debt than a debt which is owed by the state. Because, first of all, a private debt, you have to pay a higher rate of interest than the state does to borrow. Then, a private debt, you also have to pay back over, over, period, uh, over a period. The state never has to pay its borrowing back. Uh, it can issue bonds when those bo when the, those bonds mature. It issues a fresh lot. It's no, it, it, very few governments ever pay back their their lo their, lo their loans. So what we've done by this proxy borrowing uh, by by the state is we've imposed a heavy debt burden on the country because it's double what would have arisen had at least double what would have arisen had the state borrowed directly or it had it in fact not borrowed at all and had pro a proper uh, level of tax for the level of services that it was prov providing.